we spoke earlier our agenda would be uh, just to explain all of you uh, first to introduce myself i am sayed amin kadir i am the editor for manufacturing today magazine so we'll have a uh, first 5 minute just to introduce the panelists then for 40 minutes we'll have panel discussion on the role of augmented reality in manufacturing and supply chain and the last 15 minutes we'll have presentation from mr kunal patel of team viewer and we'll conclude with question answer so thanks once again gentlemen for joining today's webinar on role of augmented reality in manufacturing and supply chain so just to talk about our publication manufacturing today is owned by itp media which has over 100 weekly and monthly publication and magazines we are based uh, at quarter in dubai but we have our publication in india as well and uh, besides the print we have online events and digital platform we are present with website and that is apps and all just to introduce our partner for today's event team viewer team viewer is the leading global technology company that provides a connectivity platform to remotely access control and manage and monitor repair devices of any kind from laptop mobile phones to industrial machines and robots team viewer team viewer proactively shapes digital transformation and continuously involved in the fields of augmented reality internet of things and intelligence artificial intelligence as you know manufacturing industry has now been at the forefront in the embracing implementing new technologies in this in, in disruptive age the agility of the company to adapt new technologies will define its success as you know manufacturing companies are tasked to prepare themselves for the pandemic like uh, covid-19 in the future so everybody is looking at digitally transforming themselves and augmented reality is among the newest wave of digital tra- transformation that fast becoming normal in the manufacturing sector uh, let's to move on to introduce our panelists for today's event uh, we will have very eminent speakers today we are very honored and privileged to have them for today's event to start with uh, we would like to introduce and welcome mr santil kumar kk national manager supply chain transformation at hindustan coca cola hello santil hi everyone good afternoon all uh, as a supply chain transformation manager he is responsible for deploying lean and six sigma methodologies across all pan india sites then we have uh, mr ajit ajit des pande country head it india and south east asia at vorishia india des pande mr des pande has more than 24 years of experience and has worked with organizations like tata group and the tal manufacturing as head of it for 12 years before joining vorishia he has worked with uh, he has worked on sap crm plm and also experience with digitalization of shops for auto and aerospace part production Hi all, and uh, we also happy to have Mr. Vinish Sani. He is the Group Chief Executive Officer of Lumex, which is part of DKGen Group, and he is also Senior Executive Director Lumex Industries Limited. Hello, Vinith. Hi, hi everyone. As you know, Vinith oversees entire operations for the group, and he's a he's a veteran for the automotive industries over thirty two years of experience, and he has specifically has a rich experience and knowledge about the. techno commercial background and we also happy to have uh, mr anand subramanian he is the vice president for the tech vision business unit at frost and solvian he is also the moderator for today's event mr anand manages the group's overall business that includes consulting and is also responsible for providing the business unit's syndicated reports to clients mr anand focuses on engagement and issues that deal with the evolutions of emerging technologies and business models their impact on market terrain and the firms that operate within it and also manages the business in this profit and loss in asia he is based in chennai he heads fast and solvian's global innovation center in india and manages its internal captic center thanks sir. thanks everyone good to be part of this particular session and we have bala morgan n principal architect automation design and flipkart internet private limited hi bala Th- thanks for joining Hey all, good afternoon. Happy to be with you all here. Yeah, Bala has more than eighteen years of experience in operation, program management, project management, and supply chain design, implementation, and re-engineering. 
uh, Bala has deep experience of designing and implementing large automated distribution center for apparel and e-commerce companies. Currently, he heads uh, automation function in Flipback, where they design and implement interesting technology intervention in the supply chain processes. Uh, we also have today's partner, Team Viewer, which is headed by Kronal Petit, the director and head of business for India and South Asia. Hi, Kronal. Hi, Amin. Happy to be here and happy to have all the esteemed panelists uh, to meet each one of you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, Kunan is responsible for the business management of Team Viewer Solutions for India and South Asia. And Kunal has about 17 years of experience of sales and business management and has held many key positions in several renowned technology companies like SAP and Gartner. We appreciate your participation. I will now hand over to Anand who will uh, take the pursuit further for the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, I think we have a very, very eminent uh, team of people uh, on this particular uh, panel. And uh, I have the pleasure, of course, uh, of quickly uh, connecting the dots related to this particular briefing, the role of augmented reality in manufacturing and supply chain um, today. I'd uh, like to draw your attention on a couple of things associated uh, with this. And uh, we do have uh, specific uh, uh, questions for the panelists. And uh, we do expect that over the next hour or so, we are all going to be enlightened with a lot of case studies as well as other uh, important things that uh, have occurred within this particular interesting space. So that uh, said, let me just uh, quickly go to the next slide. So Frost & Sullivan, uh, uh, many of you might have heard about it, but uh, we've been in the business of information research for over 60 years. And uh, we are uh, calling ourselves as the growth uh, pipeline company. When we say the growth pipeline, we kind of see that it's very interest, increasingly very difficult for organizations around the world to ensure that uh, they achieve growth. And uh, when we did a survey with the CEOs around the world, this was uh, the number one objective that most uh, CEOs uh, had mentioned. So we focus within the entire uh, universe of strategies that allows companies to grow. We need to follow this particular growth pipeline cycle that ensures companies look up at the opportunity, evaluate them, look up at go-to-market strategies, implement it and monetize and optimize the different strategies that uh, we have adopted. Uh, we've been, of course, uh, present in almost 45 cities in 21 countries. And uh, we do have at least about 1,800 analysts that constantly track, trace, and look up at different market segments around the world and give our recommendations about what's driving growth within those segments. Now, why is it becoming increasingly difficult to achieve growth? Uh, right, And these are the eight uh, strategic imperatives that we believe is actually putting a pressure on the leadership team around the world to achieve or attain growth. It could be uh, the compression of value chain. We are seeing newer uh, business models that are coming into play. We are looking up at internal challenges in organization. Competition is increasing, geopolitical chaos and other things. But of importance in this particular session for today would be the ones that we will be covering quite a bit are uh, disruptive technologies, the convergence associated with those technologies, and what is the trend, the mega trend that's actually shaping up uh, for the future. Uh, and mega trends are, of course, macroeconomic perspectives that actually have an impact on business, industry, people, and others. So it's important we know these particular trends and disruptive technologies then takes it over. So that said, uh, we are focused uh, on transformational growth. And just uh, to let you know that uh, we believe that almost 90% of the global technology development happen across uh, these nine core uh, technology clusters that you see on this uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. They are, of course, uh, in the sensors and instrumentation, chemicals and advanced material, advanced manufacturing and automation, microelectronics, energy utilities, health, wellness, medical 
devices in aging. And of course, the backbone of development associated with technology is all related to the communication technology. And any and every development that happens across these core technology clusters have its application across different vertical markets that you see on the right hand side. This is not exhaustive, but we believe that all innovations that happen across the technology clusters finds its application on different markets. So that said, I'd like to kind of involve and uh, explore the different opportunities in terms of top technologies that we have identified that's likely to have an impact in the next two to five year time frame. And that's what uh, you see on this particular slide, which uh, are the technologies that Frost & Sullivan has identified as potentially game changers associated uh, uh, with these technologies. Now, two things that comes out of this. One is if companies are invested in these technologies, they stay invested. And for the larger players, if they wish to integrate solutions into their architecture, then these are the technologies that are available across different domain that's worth exploring. And the second one is these technologies are not siloed within one particular technology cluster. There is always a probable chance of these technologies likely to interact with each other. And that forms a serendipitous solution that was otherwise not thought about. So we could see the convergence of technologies that comes from sensors to chemicals that can perhaps come out with a solution in the devices space. So a lot of technologies are there, a lot of players are there, and a lot of interesting development that's happening. And today's development is very interesting in the space of uh, augmented uh, reality. So augmented reality, mixed reality, virtual reality. This is where we are seeing a lot of things that's actually shaping up. So that draws my attention on this particular slide briefly. I know we have uh, our panel of experts who are aware of different things, but for the larger crowd out here, augmented reality is uh, one of the most recent of uh, movements of digital uh, transformation. And uh, it is transforming the face of many uh, supply chains from factory floor to the field. Augmented reality is changing the way factory workers, service technicians and engineers interact. And a few applications for augmented reality include, of course, logistics and supply chain, assembly, product design and development, quality assurance, and hands-on safety training. Now, if you look up at specific benefits that uh, enhance this particular uh, technology is that its ability to improve training opportunities, right? The use of digital tools to simulate real world situations is, is quite uh, Awesome. But display overlays and interactive simulations that represent realistic scenarios and situations can provide a more effective learning opportunities for training. And that's specifically kind of um, saves a lot of time, energy and effort. The second one, of course, is uh, related to better inventory visibility and improving warehouse efficiency. Uh, AR can provide deeper insights and greater controls on what's on the shelves, what's moving, what isn't, and what the customers buy. So with uh, smart glasses, which are also available and helping improve the order picking process, showing warehouse workers what to grab, where to place, and whether it's on the shelf or on the cart. Another important thing is uh, related to remote collaboration. Today, Remote work is not new. We've all been working remotely and quite efficiently. But remote collaboration hasn't always uh, been possible in the traditional hands-on world of supply chain management. And that's where we believe that augmented reality actually opens up new avenues for digital collaboration and expert assistance for troubleshooting, maintenance, saving time and money by eliminating the need to physically transport uh, people and resources from other parts. And lastly, of course, we do have a panel of people that are from varied industries. It also kind of improves the delivery. Getting the product into the hands of the end user can be a huge time waster. That is because we have to search for the parcels, look for trucks, search for the building where the delivery is, and take it. And that's where AR 
is becoming the new normal in supply chain management, where it combines real world scenarios with digital innovation to perform traditional tasks faster and more efficient. Some key technologies, of course, are mentioned here, uh, head mounted displays that require high resolution to reduce screen door effect, high angular resolution display and wide field of view are the core technologies to achieve the near eye display. There are certain challenges that uh, the research world is addressing in terms of resolution, dizziness control and other things, but we see that all of that uh, is likely to be addressed in the next few years. That said, augmented reality in supply chain uh, management and logistics is uh, AR in supply chain can help in speeding up production, reducing downtime of machines, minimizing in-house costs, and achieving shorter sales processes, thus boosting worker engagement and enhancing overall productivity of the employees. Now, in terms of uh, the growth opportunities, because all of us uh, would like to know what opportunities lie for us related to that uh, investment in this particular space is uh, the last mile delivery, for example, the distribution center. Precise logistics are required in this space to ensure that the correct packages are strategically placed in the correct delivery vehicles. So for the, from a distribution standpoint, it's pretty useful. From a point of delivery where the parcel arrives and its final destination is referred to uh, is also quite critical. We just want to make sure that AR enables smart devices serve as an all-in-one technology solution for delivery persons. And pick up and drop Kudo, as it's called uh, in its acronym, uh, allows customers to collect orders at specific locations, such as local outlets or uh, lockers. So all of these actually benefits and the entire stakeholders associated with this uh, is what is actually explained here. We see AR companies, the, the large ones that are actually providing a lot of uh, uh, mass production of hardware, software, and content. And then you have the application providers uh, like the big names that you see here. In addition to this, we also see a lot of research and development organization that's actually coming out with the cutting edge research of leveraging AR technology, especially in industrial design, healthcare, and uh, other simulations. Policymakers such as the European Union and other important organizations are creating a lot of uh, uh, buzz, buzzworthiness associated with this. And of course, specifically on the funding, we see a lot of funding that's happening both in public as well as in private domains. So that uh, said, we see a lot of uh, names here. These are all firms that are actually working on the different technologies that is actually making augmented reality, what it can achieve and how we all could embrace this particular space. So for today, we are going to address a lot of challenging questions. Are we able to understand this? Are we, how are we accounting for these trends? Are we aligning ourselves with manpower and resources? Do we have a robust digitally led innovation platform? So all of this is going to be addressed in our session today. And I'm happy to start off uh, my discussions first on this particular domain to bring in the key experts who are driving this transformational change. So I'd like to first uh, connect with uh, Mr. Ajit uh, Des Pandey, who's uh, the country head uh, of Farusia. So Ajit, uh, uh, we've been uh, receiving a lot of interest and a lot of guidance uh, in this particular space. And you, as uh, the head of uh, information technology with Ferocia, how are you leveraging the digital technologies such as augmented reality and virtual reality, besides others, to accelerate your firm's uh, digital transformation here in India? Thanks, Anand. I hope I'm, I'm audible to everyone. Uh, yes, I'm representing Foresia, who is a global leader in auto component manufacturing. Uh, and we have been coined ourselves as a technology company. And we are exploring all possible venues of uh, and avenues of technologies to be, to be tried, tested. We have failed in many. So 
but uh, for this i will say this pandemic has actually ex- accelerated the growth uh, of digitization in foresia just to give you an information one third of design capacity of foresia is operated out of from india which is roughly around uh, 1500 to 1800 Uh, engineers working for for asia uh, only in design and this is where virtual reality digitization augmented reality has helped us uh, because we have uh, plants across 35 countries uh, and the design built by indian team are getting into production as globally so we have used those uh, these virtual tools to connect with our uh, end uh, customers or our internal customers so productionization tool validations all these were very useful for us then when we are talking about uh, uh, machines then uh, we have used uh, even the expertise with help of virtual tools from say i have typically will give an example i have a plant in ammavarupalli which is next to kia which is in andhra pradesh close to bangalore Uh, has a problem and getting solved out of germany with with the help of a uh, virtual tool is what we have gain out of all these uh, situations and the tools in a ground reality definitely we have used the training as one or another aspect to you know, often virtual reality in our day to day life so these are some of the common examples which we have used in manufacturing and design very good thanks a lot and uh, it's good uh, to hear that you're already leveraging it and that you're able to kind of get uh, the, the support from other regions so, so so i'd like to now get my next panel member mr sendu uh, mr sendu before uh, i kind of throw the question i'd like to check with you if you have any thing that you'd like to share uh, please Yeah. Uh, I think uh, on a general perspective, since we are going to talk more on um, industry supply chain part, I would wanted to give a context about what actually ar- augmented reality uh, is for the general public. So moving away from the manufacturing or an industrial sector, if I I wanted to give a brief about what exactly it means, so people can quickly relate, connect, and think of uh, various use cases. So what we mean by augmented reality is like uh, enhancing the physical environment by bringing in some. Uh, relevant digital content on a real time so that's a key uh, aspect here and i i would quote some simple examples which people can quickly relate to so starting from hollywood movies so as uh, early as 1987 when the first movie when predator came in so we had ed mounted display and where we would see the thermal cameras showing the scenes and uh, it is not uh, just restricted there there are several movies like uh, uh, terminator or even the uh, iron man and the as recent as the avatar where you could see extensive usage of all the digital tools and technologies and especially augmented reality is very well used in showing the uh, valley and the navigation part on the sports again uh, we could see extensive usage of augmented reality let it be uh, i could bring in cricket uh, which is very familiar in at least in indian region so decision making we see hockey we see the balls trajectory that is displayed immediately after a ball is bowled and to take a decision whether it is an lpw or not or uh, it, it let it be the player statistics once he hits a 50 or an 100 so we have an overlay on the pitch on which all the directions uh, he was able to hit and how did he score or a bowler when he uh, completes a certain row of wickets we see all the balls uh, which he delivered and which all the balls were able to take and wicket or which all the balls uh, were read for boundary uh, so these are some of the areas and the most important aspect in uh, sports i would say is the advertising so we could see the grounds now being digitally and dynamically changed with the advertisement that they want so the broadcaster has the flexibility based on the region on which it is getting telecasted so to real time uh, change the content of the advertisement uh, so you get a sponsor and more relevant sponsors so i think these are the areas i i want people to connect to so that they will be able to understand Uh, what ar is and how they can relate to and if at all they wanted to physically explore it they can always do a google search on their mobile uh, for any image mostly like a dog or a horse and you can see view in 3d in the bottom once you scroll down and then when you click uh, view in my space you will be taken to an ar space where you have to scan your surrounding and you will be able to bring in the uh, animal or whichever animal that you are searching for on your real space 
so that we give a quick uh, understanding of what uh, ar is so that's something that i wanted to quickly give us and connect our context to people who are not so familiar about uh, ar absolutely thanks a lot yeah the, the, i think the pokemon character yes <laughs> the japanese guys built actually forced us to kind of look into that particular space thanks uh sendu that's uh, really an eye opener for many people listening to this session my specific point uh, to you uh, you're uh, of course driving a lot of things in the supply chain space and predominantly in the in the fmcg industry um so what are the typical challenges that uh, you foresee and how is it that uh, you can address it uh, basically from asset utilization productivity or uh, process safety etc what's your uh, views on this yeah so um, industry like ours uh, which is in a um, process industry unlike in discrete manufacturing industry where each equipment will have a batch production so this being in continuous production um, and our uh, lines predominantly are automated uh, the biggest challenge is most of our factories are in remote location and if at all there is a downtime uh, if i need to have my uh, service engineer to be available to service one uh, the experts the local expert might not be always the best person to help us solve this but we need to have them on the uh, factory to assess what the situation is and then he has to uh, circle back to the oem who might be mostly sitting on the other part of the world and uh, then he has to communicate explain this all of this is taking more good amount of time and it is uh, uh, we are losing good amount of productivity and cost on this angle so here uh, we have a remote connect for most of our equipments but uh, again it is only in uh, data connection so when we add the augmented reality element into this solution so it becomes a most co- more collaborative effort and uh, things get started much faster and we are able to get uh, the solution real time and uh, the person on the shop floor are able to make all the changes uh, which is guided by the person on the other side of the world and all of this you can imagine the time uh, that it saves and the effort that it saves of people traveling so that's a big uh, plus on having an augmented related uh, ai related solution for maintenance in us, in our industries yeah, absolutely I, i totally agree and concur with uh, your thoughts basically you're saying that uh, the productivity issues uh, are all addressed leveraging this thanks all right um, i'm just going to go in circles uh, for the benefit of uh, everyone uh, my next uh, panelist that i would like to probe and check is uh, with mr balamurugan who is the principal architect uh, at flipkart and uh, today there's no day that passes without any of us actually going to flipkart or one of these e-com places uh, to place our orders and i know the amount and the magnitude of data and information that needs to be processed every second for everything that you do so most of us of course today buy our uh, essentials online and uh, how e-commerce company like yours are using augmented reality to make uh, the platform easier navigate and enhance the virtual experience for customers thanks mr an interesting question um, i will uh, address this from two points of view right one is from the customers and second is from the retailers right uh, from the customer uh, point of view uh, if we realize probably like 8 10 years back uh, people uh, were skeptical about buying digitally they thought people would only buy books and uh, cds and uh, m- uh, mobiles where there are a lot of personal categories like uh, fashion which people said uh, nobody would buy uh, digitally because it needs a lot of touch and feel including vegetables uh, but now as we speak uh, that has actually taken uh, a larger space in the uh, e-commerce right as we speak uh, but that has definitely uh, does does not give the complete experience as you do a physical shopping where uh, you do a try and buy right example uh, today a lot of customers buy a product and it doesn't fit and hence they have to return it uh, that kind of gives a, a, a unpleasant experience right so uh, augmented reality uh, virtual reality actually helps to bring in that experience of uh, personalization or helping them to digitally try it without actually being physically the items being physically being present 
uh, that's a big big that will be a very big game changer uh, right now coming from the uh, retailer point of view um, normally if you look at the retailers uh, their larger share of business used to come from the um, impulsive buying where uh, people tend to bu- came to buy a few items we go to retail stores but then they end up buying a lot more what they see because that oh, that is visually appealing and they end up buying more items uh, that is something which the retailers have lost today uh, because in the digital world you go and search for a specific item and you only get a relevant uh, searches ac- according to what you look for or something which is related to that so augmented reality and uh, virtual reality when people do that immersive buying it gives back that impulsive buying opportunity for the uh, retailers as well so you're uh, kind of uh also having a marketing strategy associated uh, with leveraging this particular technology yeah 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 thanks a lot uh, balavan for that and uh, i'd like to now kind of uh, bring upon uh, the ceo of lumex mr vineet uh, sani uh, who's uh, of course uh, having pioneering experience in this particular space and driving a lot of things uh, in the digital transformation space uh, so vineet uh, uh you've been associated uh, in different eras of uh, the industry so how do you use uh, the latest technologies uh, related to ar vr as part of uh, your uh, digital transformation strategies and what is it that you're achieving in terms of op- optimization and asset utilization within your sector Yeah, man. Thank you, and greetings to all the participants. See, I'll tell you this: uh, all of us are talking this subject because of you know pandemic, basically, which forced us to think is dire- this direction. And I strongly feel that why digitization or digitalization or digital transformation, whatever you may call, is being discussed so much because across the world, all of us are facing the same problem. and therefore this new thing is getting accepted easily suppliers are accepting it customers are accepting it everybody is open to accept these new ideas it's very important to understand why we you know things are changing because any new technology finds lot of resistance if supplier wants to do customer doesn't want to acknowledge that customer wants to do supplier doesn't have a skill set to do that so but today everybody being put to face the same problem of pandemic understands that this is the only solution that's very important why this homogeneous atmosphere is getting created that's point number 1 number 2 part of this digitization or digital transformation a small part is ar or vr or mr whatever we are discussing right so i'll focus my discussion to ar because that is the main topic for easy understanding let's put it like this ar i am dividing in just two buckets one bucket is where i have all the information available in the system but it is not in front of me where and when i want if i can get that that is augmenting my reality that is improving my reality that's one set of information the second bucket is in my real environment can i place a three dimensional object to see how it would look or change my situation to enhance productivity it's very simple just two 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 important aspects one i am repeating information is available somewhere in the system for example machine temperature efficiency pressure everything is available somewhere but i don't have it and since i don't have it i can't take decisions i can't use it so if i can get that information when and where i want i am augmenting my reality and helping a decision second this is my real world and i want to put an object and see without having that object i can create digitally put it and it saves time so essentially how it is helping me see in in manufacturing we are hardcore manufacturing people and therefore we have a problem also of mindset we we believe more of a brick and mortar and digitization takes more effort in our case so but how it helps is we have you know 16 types of losses classified in manufacturing ar and digitization helps us in quickly identifying them through pred- predictive maintenance it is also helping us in safety especially during maintenance of the machines 
maintenance of the equipments uh, it it is really very helpful for safety and essentially productivity on the other side what i said about the three dimensional thing we we like today we have 28 new locations uh, new uh, 28 manufacturing facilities in lumax in india itself so when we make a new plant it is extremely important that when we plan the layouts we use augmented reality because you can't get machines to see how the layout would look you can change it very effectively and come to the most optimized layout and i would like to give you example we set up a new plant where we use agvs automated guided vehicle for the first time in gujarat now it's very important how the agv would move what what path it would take without disrupting things in on the way right now to simulate that digital is the best way ar is the best way to do however i would like to admit again that these are the pockets i still have a bigger picture under creation in my mind where all these dots can be connected and we have a very effective solution maybe using ar where it is required maybe using vr where it is required and maybe using a simple digitization so so the boundaries actually are becoming seamless right so but that big, bigger picture the map of digitization digitalization or digital transformation is honestly not still clear in the mind because we need to do a lot of work another just last one point is having said all that it is very important that the skill of manpower that we have is also enhanced a manpower that understands brick and mortar for them to understand digitization is not easy is not easy right our our manpower comes from rural areas they come they are not so much educated in in manufacturing so that kind of change is extremely important if we need to penetrate deep into any manufacturing organization so thank you so much yeah. thanks thanks that that was very profound uh, we need really uh, a lot of learnings uh, and uh, a lot of use cases that you have cited about how you are actually leveraging it and uh, obviously training is uh, is so important from we have to move from the the brick and mortar to someone that can actually get used to it and that's what i think our uh, complete education ecosystem is also kind of trying to change to start uh, giving engineers who will directly have a feel you leveraging uh, augmented reality for uh, their own benefits so thanks thanks a lot uh, for your profound uh, uh, observation on how the trends are shaping up and what is it that we need to do in the future so that uh, brings me to to, to pranal uh, so so pranal you are uh, in the place where you are actually developing all of these uh, beautiful looking gadgets that actually helps facilitate uh, and eases all of us uh, quite a bit uh we so we we obviously cannot look at uh, augmented reality and virtual reality in isolation so how is it that this can be integrated with the company's uh, broader uh, digital transformation strategy and goal yeah i mean anand uh, thank you so much for that question first of all and uh, vinit sir i think uh, i would like to continue on your uh, point uh, how can we have a kind of a google map of digital transformation which can actually uh, which can actually cover the entire enterprise you know uh, it is not that i am only talking of remote support using augmented reality to reduce my downtime that is one then i want to uh, improve my warehouse management by giving ar smart glasses to improve the efficiencies of warehouse operator then i have my manufacturing process where there are a lot of human interferences and that needs to be augmented with information so that you know there are error rates are brought down and the turnaround times are improved and then finally we talk of uh, the overall uh, inspection safety measure quality assurance uh, and uh, vinit sir to to your uh, this and we have seen this uh, out of our experience of 40 years in augmented reality that there are enterprises who have started with remote support moved to inspection then move to manufacturing and then uh, move to warehouse as well so we have customers who have lived with us with the full journey so uh, when we talk anand about digital transformation it is basically transforming 
the way uh, a particular process is carried out and giving empowering the frontline workers basically what we see is that you know we the first wave or the second wave of information technology as we all say or the third wave was empowering decision makers uh, with uh, information with analytics with data everything fourth wave is more towards the frontline how do we empower the frontline whether it is using iot to collect the information or whether it is with ar giving that information back to the person who can fix that and that is our frontline worker and to all our surprise when we did a survey 60 or rather in some industries up to 80% of the business processes are done by frontline workers and think of think of a scenario where if we can just improve this frontline worker productivity by 10% that will be a huge improvement in the overall business productivity for the entire enterprise so when it's to your uh, observation basically you can have ar based use cases across the enterprise uh, different departments and which can all then be brought together under one digital transformation map uh, the most common use cases which we see is as what sentil was talking or uh, ajit was talking was reducing the downtime uh, using video based remote support on augmented reality and that is most common and very widely used second thing why this all topic has become very important is because of platforms like team weaver who has optimized the software to work with the wearables with the hardware in varied environment now i have a customer who is like 200 kilometers away from calcutta who is using team weaver augmented reality platform to uh, support the plant operations and um, they are not in a very high bandwidth or a, a very high uh, internet uh, area but they are successfully using it they are seeking support from italy to do the plant modernization so these are very practical example another example one of the largest paint manufacturer uh, ha- uses their uh, help their retailer to fix the tinting machines wherever required via our ar platform so these are some practical real life example solving real uh, problem and then everything coming back together into the digital transformation journey so that that's what anand i would like to share Thanks, so, thanks, Kunal. Yeah, I give me a minute, Kunal, just to add on a bit to what you said is, you know, another thing that is happening is lot of platforms are coming in who are providing similar as TeamView. They are not as big or as prominent as you, but there are many small, small companies. They are also providing very good service in developing a platform. So what is happening is only uh, you know sporadic uh, actions are happening. So so the global actions are not happening as an organization. but unless the, there is a a bigger picture clear in the mind what needs to be done in an organization these efforts will always remain sporadic and they may not fructify correct yeah, i agree i agree with you sir and that that's the reason why enterprise like team viewer can help from the larger uh, story stand i kind of um, we have only a few minutes but uh, let's see what we can kind of capture within this Uh, there is a question that has come up in the chat box from Mr. A K Singh, and uh, I'll of course uh, direct this uh, to Ajit. Uh, so basically, Mr. Singh uh, is asking, what is the role that AR and VR can play in Industry 4.0 for the manufacturing sector, and uh, how, we, how especially for the automotive industry? okay i will uh, take the point what vinit was saying little while i go to answer this uh, first is that big picture is needed which will actually fructify the the results what everyone wants and all of us are always been question on roi so that's where that big picture will help and once you start industry 4.0 or even some of them has started industry 2.0 from onwards is nothing but you have started connecting the machines connecting the equipments and lot of data is available and the first and foremost uh, as most of us were saying can i use it for in i am very typically saying in the manufacturing domain is to reduce my downtime or in other word improve my productivity and this is where we try to analyze the alarms or the false alarms and try to provide quicker solution faster solution uh will be the best method and industry 4.0 will already enable you the connectivity on each machine 
you will have a touch pad or a or a touch screen or a uh, machine connected where you can interact and this is where the first lever will be benefited when ar comes into it and to explain this point i will take again the example of a machine downtime or if there is an any alarm get generated out of my industry 4.0 solution which might be big or a small gives me an alarm i process it and comes with a solution which gets reflected out of an ar that's actually the best example of an integration of an ar into industry 4.0 where i my solution or the my uh, library or an expert comes in and in, inform that how that problem can be fixed by an operator itself than typical process in manufacturing that alarm goes to the uh, your maintenance team maintenance team then directs and comes down to doing it if i reduce this cycle and give this back to my operator itself when the machine is down anyway his his productivity is down so by ar tool if i give him a method to solve it is an ultimate uh, benefit to a manufacturing organization which is in real time or in real cost part of it like the people sitting in c uh, cabins will able to actually make it happen and will able to give you more sponsorship for going ahead and doing it due to time constant i have given just a small answer. no no i think you have answered a lot of questions that's there on the chat box that i am seeing there were multiple questions i think you have addressed uh, many of those thanks uh, ajit for that i'm i'm just going to pick one more from the chat box and i think uh, i'll direct this to mr vinit uh, basically the question is how can ar improve maintenance uh, practices uh, i think ar could be more very very useful in maintenance honestly and uh, again having said that you need to have the right a uh, culture in the organization to use ar i want to just qualify that just buying ar would not help solve maintenance problems but let's assume that culture is created management from top is committed and then i am telling how it could be useful in maintenance so please assume that so in maintenance what happens is that there is a theory which is the maintenance book of a machine and there is a practical problem and in 99.99% the person who maintains has not read the book so ar while he is wearing a variable maybe holo lens or something he can see the clear instruction so what i want to say is ar is bridging a wide gap between theory and practical he can see the machine he can see the parts and he can follow the instructions please open screw number 10 now please remove the knob which is yellow color he can follow and maintain and then gradually he gets trained to do that that is point number 1 but that is again a reactive maintenance i would always say that predictive maintenance is important and in this case the data of the machine can tell you on your mobile that machine is wants a maintenance in next 5 days like today even in in the cars you have these facilities right so so this is a predictive maintenance so these are there are many tools uh, which can be used to train our people through ar and this would really help in maintaining and trust me the 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 one of the biggest losses that we face in manufacturing is on account of maintenance and each of the plant head would be worried on the repair and maintenance expense head which is never justified in his lifetime so ar will really help in solving those issues again i am saying with again a caveat the right culture and right penetration from the topmost person that this has to be implemented that's important absolutely thanks a lot uh, yeah we need to create enough budgets and uh, we need to have the will from the leadership team thanks uh, thanks so much for that we need uh, i think uh, we just have very few minutes for this uh, uh so hafiz uh, do we yeah, can yeah. get ronal to start uh, his presentation yes, about yes, this know. please because yeah yeah ronal is running short ronal, over to you ronal yeah. i think we have taken some more minutes but uh, over to you i'll try and squeeze it as much as possible uh, just to kind of summarize everything what we discussed and the the feedback what uh, my esteemed panelists have given and share their knowledge i have just cre- created something Uh, which talks about uh, more uh, which which talks about uh, 
how can we help uh, so uh, team weaver today has grown from a normal remote support application to a full fledged platform and uh, last 15 years we have been uh, developing solutions and giving solutions to enterprises for variety of use cases this one platform now fits your enterprise so to the to the point which everyone was discussing that how do i have a one digital platform on which i can do multiple things and use ar across the enterprise that's what we offer as an enterprise the fact that you know frontline worker make maximum uh, a part of the enterprise and the fact that you know empowering the frontline worker with real time information can change the way uh, how we work and the productivity of the enterprises Uh, it becomes very critical that you know we address this issue at the grassroots level and that's what we are uh, proposing or what what we are promoting is that you know we have a connected system which is connected in front end and in back end gives a very very hands free experience improves the worker productivity and it is very flexible software as a service platform we see a lot of change in the overall manufacturing processes knowledge gap which uh, translates into skill training management uh, increasing complexity you know even with automation we see what to automate how much to automate how many processes could be still human driven uh, we have seen even large enterprises who are into large uh, discrete manufacturing have micro assemblies which are human inter- human uh, driven and so such kind of knowledge uh, is there and there, there is a complexity increasing uh, with everything being connected resolution time is becoming important in primarily in post sale support and now everything as a service now i was talking to uh, another day with one of the leader from a tire company he says that we have started something called as a tire as a service and so with everything as a service model you know resolution times have become very critical for enterprises and innovation as all the leaders innovation is a competitive advantage it is not that you know innovation is good to have uh innovation is bringing the competitive advantage for leaders having said that you know augmented reality has an impact across different industries different uh, uh departments within the companies it is not only maintenance or support but it is maintenance repair uh, after sales uh, training warehouse management manufacturing everything and we can uh, help you across entire value chain of your industry manufacturing as well as supply chain process so the platform platform is a software as a service platform it offers you features and some functionalities for remote support which we all discussed about it's a video based support along with ar tracer then inspection this is another area which can be uh, optimized and digitized you have uh, enterprises where you have uh, safety inspection quality assurance factory acceptance test uh, remote uh, testing etc happening all this can be given on the uh, smart glass as a workflow step by step in a guided manner to fix the problem manufacturing again a very guided assembly what to assemble when how and uh, how do we fix that finally warehouse management so what to pick what to sort how to pick where to keep it uh, creating a digital map of the entire warehouse on the smart wearable is what we can achieve by the via the enterprise so in all a totality of uh, enterprise can be digitized and brought into a virtual environment uh, of uh, which uh, on the augmented reality smart wearable normal features are ar tracer pointers whiteboard live chat file transfer recording multiple expert in the same session and uh, trying to solve a problem is already available best is this platform is optimized for bandwidth we have customers in india who are using it even at absolutely low bandwidth and very comfortably using it connecting to different customer different partners different uh, suppliers across the world the software also comes with a, a workflow because uh, uh, most of these processes are workflow driven your sops your gmps uh your uh, uh safety audit etc needs to be digitized and given in the platform we support across a different front end so someone talk about uh, realware google and microsoft uh, we support the entire value chain of hardware front end devices uh not only uh, wearables but also mobile phones and uh, tablet as well as uh, smart wearables like barcode scanners and rfid scanners some of the very existing use cases like airbus airbus is uh, uh, into helicopter manufacturing aeroplane manufacturing they use team viewer augmented reality for inspection and uh, while manufacturing process they optimize the uh, micro assembly by a step by step guided procedure they have achieved a very very significant uh, turnaround time 
similarly fent in germany has have achieved a very transparent way of working they use it in manufacturing uh, optimization uh, toyota uses it in after sales so they have after sales support across different location uh, they use steam weaver augmented reality to support their mechanics on their uh, modern electronic equipments or modern uh, automobile equipments or helping them to fix the l2 l3 or l4 level problems liber is a german company they use iot and augmented reality uh, in together where they use the entire platform for doing uh, maintenance uh, the alerts come from iot the alerts are uh, designed and given on to the smart wearable and hence the engineers take the necessary action we understand this is not a singular platform as everyone was pointing out it's an enterprise journey enterprise platform and hence integration is very important we support all the major integration protocols whether integrating is your sap or oracle or microsoft or even afs or warehouse management systems like manhattan we have integration experience and we can deliver that as a part of the project we deliver end to end project so you don't have to find out a different supplier for hardware different supplier for software etc etc we take the full responsibility and deliver that so next steps friends uh, i hope i am in time which i am i know we'll be very very happy to reach out to each one of you talk to you we definitely have very exciting uh, offers uh, and uh, discounts etc for people who have registered and who have attended for sure uh, one last topic uh, friends this is not a future technology this is a current technology available in 3g 4g 5g bandwidth level and you can start using it today with that i will hand it over back to anand and hafiz Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Ronald, for explaining about what you guys do. So, if I have to conclude, of course, uh, the future of uh, augmented reality in manufacturing, perhaps, is the integration of AI, data analytics, cloud sensors, robotics, and other technologies. So, we can envision a centralized management platform where AI will also be part of that. Uh, that can control the potential. to control every element in the factory in a bidirectional uh, manner thereby perpetually optimizing uh, a, a factory so we can expect ar to be applied to a video stream from a consumer of a current products condition the video could be applied in an ar aspect on the business case or in the customer service space as a result the end users or the customers or the consumers does not have to lose time Uh, or any time in bringing the product into the store, the supply chain partners does not lose any time in analyzing the product problems with the product, and the consumers will be able to obtain or repair or replace without any downtime. So this is what is likely to kind of propel the entire uh, supply chain forward. So uh, I know we have a panel of uh, luminaries, and we unfortunately have only 60 minutes to speak so much. in this particular space so we are really, really doing uh, injustice to so many people out here perhaps we need to have a day long session just exclusively to hear about the lovely case studies and the use cases that many of you have got but i've uh, i've learned quite a bit and uh, i hope the panel here uh, have also uh, learned quite a bit with examples from other uh, uh, dignitaries and uh, we also had a very good uh, participation of almost about 120 of them who have showed up for it uh, who have all been enthralled with uh, what ar can do so with that uh, i'd like to now hand this over and thank all of you for your time energy and effort to actually be part of this uh, particular uh, event and uh, i now hand this over to hafiz for the next steps thank you very much anand uh, uh, thank you very much I really appreciate you know you've been a you know strong back backbone for the entire uh, panel discussion for today and as you correctly said you know we point taken next time we're going to have a longer time for that you know for everyone to share their their learnings i'm sure you know people are still stick to it you know because we have over time uh, over time date but people are stick around us we if if i you know it won't be just as you know if we won't take a couple of question from the online offline people who have you know sent question to us there was one question which was exciting that how the ar will make the make quick decision on manufacturing challenges like breakdowns any plant changes material shortage and quality issues if anyone would like to take this from the dignitary see uh, what happens is 
AR or digitize whatever, it really facilitates decision making process. For example, now we have, for example, 43 molding machines and all data can be screen or can be seen on my screen, for example, or a manufacturing head screen. And there could be a alarm that something is going wrong in this particular machine on the pressure uh, pump. It is possible, right? So before it, it happens, at the first instant you have an alarm and you can preempt that disaster to happen in terms of safety or a quality problem that can come in, which you would know only after it has happened. So this is the first example that, that actually, actually it is happening. You will come to know those signals, number one. Number two, uh, let's go to safety. Now, uh, we use a lot of uh, you know, lacquer in our uh, manufacturing and, and there are filters, micro filters, which have to be changed at a particular frequency. If you don't change it, it, it gets blocked and there is a fire hazard. Now, depending manually on that, as we were doing in the past, is risky. But if we could get that augmented reality right in front of you, look, filter is now 75% done. It's a maintenance time. You are averting tragedies. That's a decision-making point. Plus there is escalations. Third example, which I think all of you will know. You ask a person, I will use a language of understanding. This is a standard reply, unfortunately, in our kind of a culture, which, which is changing. I don't want to be critical on that, but this is a fact. Now, AR tells you, please don't forget. So there, the, you are closing the escape routes, which is required in management of things. So there are various examples which, which helps in decision-making. Quick decision-making, timely decision-making, providing you the right data, which is otherwise available in remote place or near the machine. So you won't know. And most of the time you are addressing, oh, that you are doing a damage control. But with AR, you can be proactively involved in decision-making and avert that damage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There was much and much... Uh much inside that i'm sure the the the, first pe the people who wanted to know i think you answered very well uh Sentil, if you wanted to take this you know uh, somebody you know arvind he also uh, uh, written an offline question that he's planning a battery manufacturing plant and how can we collaborate ar with productivity and supply chain management you've been an expert i'm sure if you can add to it yep, followed so by ajit if you want to add to it Yep. So, uh, so let me try and answer to some extent. So, uh, as we were talking, the most important aspect of uh, the AR part coming up on the maintenance, but it is not uh, restricted to maintenance as well. Uh, so, since it's a new company that's coming up, so we can use it extensively for training, uh, which is the most important use case at the initial stages of an uh, upcoming plan. And uh, it can be used for all our manufacturing manuals. So people, gone are the days, like when you buy a new mobile device, how big is a manual that you get and uh, how many times you would have gone through it? Because we prefer everything to be more visual, more real, uh, contextual. So we can't go and search a an, 300-page uh, document to understand what we need to do. And uh, people don't have that much of patience. So in that way, AI really helps us bringing in contextual information. Let it be a standard operating procedure or a uh, service manual. So we'll be able to navigate directly to the point that we are interested in. Uh, so it saves time and it also ensures that the quality is uh, achieved at the very first time. So the, the, these are some of the simple use cases I can't bring in, but there are enough use cases of uh, deploying AR right from the beginning, right from the layout design, uh, manufacturing, training, quality aspects. And uh, we talked enough on the maintenance aspect for sure, yes, it is. And there are use cases on warehouse with respect to helping picking, uh, all of that. So it is not just related, uh, limited to one single use case, but uh, it can be extensively used and uh, partnering with the right partner will help us uh, tap the entire gamut of the features that we can uh, tap with here. So, um, uh, Hafiz, I'll just take uh, 30 seconds just to add the S-Class yeah. Mercedes and E-Class. They, they don't have the service manual in, in the re recent models. You just need to point out your phone on, on the device and there will be numbers. You click the number and you know what, how, 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 what is the function. So the service manual is getting eliminated from the system. Mr. Ajit, do you want to add to it if you have anything? Uh, the key aspect will remain as uh, uh, Senthil was also mentioning that you can use AR from the beginning itself. Typically in manufacturing organization, you will conduct a 3P workshop or a, 
or a layout workshop from there you can start ar to uh, even the later on the installations commissioning um, then uh, training certifications and he's is uh, going to put up a battery manufacturing plant which will also have a lot of hazardous chemicals so even uh, making sure those are are monitored properly the work instructions are being used are also a very vital role and in as your supply chain management also you can use some of those uh, not full ar but at least some of the digitization tools to uh, make the life simpler doing the it's more like an industry 4.0 of getting added into it will be more beneficial the, uh, there with an optimal cost part of it thank you very much hafiz if may i may add yeah. particularly when since he is talking about a hazardous industry um where safety becomes of a paramount uh, uh, criticality uh, we can kind of simulate lot of unfortunate events and prepare the team for how to respond to those events uh, through ar vr and that will be a very big um, value add for such industries which deals with hazardous chemicals i'm sure there are a lot of questions you know but uh, i'm sure we can take that offline and and there are there are because there was still lot of question which was which was sent earlier uh I think you know uh, amazingly, amazingly, you know, wonderfully, Anand. I'm sure you've been the backbone as Ali said. Thank you very much, you know, dear panel members, for your you know insights, you know, which you have shared. The session was amazingly filled with real life scenarios and much more. You know, we appreciate you know the entire panel speakers, Santil Kumar, Ajit Deshpande, Vinit Sani sir, Anand, Anand, you, you know, uh, Bala sir. and kronal you 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 summed it very well committed and dedicated in sharing insight in the interest of the inter- in industry additionally the uh, uh, the thought provoking question from audience made the discussion very lively we hope it was a learning experience for uh, each stakeholders of the summit uh, thank you very much from team manufacturing today and itp and we as 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 anand said we will definitely come back with a longer time and with with much more to learn and by the till 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 that time you know be safe thank you very much appreciate thank your you time all. thank you thank, thank you, you everyone have a good weekend bye bye bye